Hey y'all, hi. Today, I am going to talk with you about what I would buy if I had to start over with my makeup collection. I get requests for this video all the time. An oldie but a goodie, right? A, a YouTube old school classic. And every time I see the comment requesting it, I'm like, oh, everybody already knows what I would buy. Or I think I did it already. And I think I did film this video, but it was like in 2018. And a couple of days ago, I just took myself by the lapels and I was like, Hannah. The last time you filmed that video was in 2018 and there are a lot of people who don't know. Like maybe they watch a video here and a video there, but they don't watch enough of you to be able to predict exactly what you would buy. Plus, even though some of the things I would buy are like my greatest hits and half of you will be able to predict it, there are other things that when I sat down and I did the thought experiment surprised even me. And in fact, I ended up being a little less interested in just like listing my favorite makeup, which I think is what this video often ends up being. I'm a little bit more interested in actually trying to travel down the road of the thought experiment of how the process would actually unfold if I literally needed to go out and create like a makeup starter kit for myself all at once. So there's a little bit in this video of maybe I would do this, maybe I would do that, like a couple of different versions of how it might go down if I were actually realistically doing this, but I think that that's going to be even more interesting than just a list of products. If you haven't watched my channel before or you haven't watched very many of my videos and you're just starting to poke around here, then welcome. I'm really glad you're watching. As you may know, my name is Hannah. I make videos about fashion and beauty and, you know, aesthetics at large. I'm also really interested in consumerism. So this is a good combination of a couple of my interests, talking about beauty, but also talking about consumerism and the consumer process. If you like it, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's get right into the meat of the video. So the question I've been asking myself is realistically what would happen if I were starting over with my makeup collection? How would it actually go down? And there are two factors that I'm gonna lay out before you. One is financial. I don't think that what I would do is go out and buy my exact favorite product in every category. That's not what the answer is to the question in this video because it would add up to so much money. So I feel like I would be cutting corners in some areas, making do with much less expensive products in some areas and sort of buy my time until I was able to invest in my actual favorites. And some of my actual favorites, I feel like I can't live without and I would buy them right away. The other factor is logistical. I think that the process would be somewhat shaped by logistics. And what I mean by that is that I would, I think, be placing an order from Ulta, an order from Sephora, an order from Credo. I know that I would be doing that because there are those critical things that I can't live without that I would be buying. So beyond those critical items that are causing me to say that I would be placing those those orders, a lot of my decisions are shaped by the knowledge that I would be placing those orders, meaning I'm picking what I'm picking because they're available at those retailers. I think that realistically, some of the choices would end up being made because of efficiency. That said, as I tell you about what I think I would buy, I'm going to go through it category by category in terms of makeup. I'm going to talk about like base makeup, eye makeup, etc. I think that makes more sense for the flow of the video. But you'll see what I mean as I go through about decisions being affected by the logistics of the orders. And maybe at the end, I'll revisit that concept and just talk about chronologically how I think it would unfold if I actually had to do this. So primer is an area in which I think I would cut corners. I would go for the budget option because there's one that I really like. It's the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I've grown even more fond of it over the past year. It's a great dupe for some high-end primers. I like how it feels pore filling, like genuinely skin smoothing but also like skincare. It actually feels moisturizing and not dry at all. I might not want it to be my only primer forever, but if I were genuinely embarking on this process, I would buy this and happily have it be my only primer for quite a while. I would also pick it, I think, because it plays well with everything. It's super multi-purpose. It's a good balancing base for things that tend to be glowy, but it's also not so mattifying that I end up with dry looking or dry feeling skin if I'm using more matte base products. Products. For complexion, this is kind of the main area in which I don't feel like I would be able to bring myself to cut corners. I would definitely get my standard two complexion products, well, three complexion products actually that I lean on on an almost daily basis. One is the EXA Green Color Corrector, hence the required order from Credo Beauty. EXA is a Credo Beauty brand. I love this because it has that gray tinge to it, feels kind to my skin 
in. It's a little bit mattifying because it has some clay in it, which helps to combat the luminous products that I tend to use all over my face. I use this pretty much every day unless I'm testing some other green color corrector. And sometimes I use just this, especially if my skin's in pretty good shape. But when I need more, my default products are the Rose Ink Concealer in the lightest shade, LX010, and the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in Chantilly for spot concealing. I use the Rose Ink Concealer as an all-purpose base product. I use it all over my face. I use it as a foundation, basically, and I just sheer it out. I just use a little bit if I want it to cover a large surface area and not be too heavy. It is extremely pigmented and a little bit goes a long way. And when I stretch it to go a long way, I end up with a nice sheer coverage, even though it's so pigmented. But the best thing about it is that the color matches so great for me. It's a very pale, desaturated, kind of gray leaning olive shade, hard to find. I also really love the formula. It has a bit of a dewiness, feels nourishing, feels creamy. And I feel like they make a good pairing, the EXO with a little bit of clay in it and this, which leans dewy. Rose ink has their own website, but you can also get this at Sephora. And I think, again, for ease of logistics, that's where I would be getting it. And the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer, the fact that it's really matte and that it's kind of a dull and slightly dark version of my skin tone makes it ideal for spot concealing for me. It's also quite sturdy and setting it with powder is very effective. I've had this one for so long that it might be time to replace it soon, even though I haven't used it up yet. It's just getting really old. I use it pretty much every day. So those would be my pricey complexion products. I usually put makeup on my face, on my skin to even out my skin tone, cancel out my redness, even if I'm not wearing any other makeup. So those are the products that I get the most use out of. They're the ones that are on my skin for the most hours in any given day or in any given week. And I feel like that is where I would want my main investment to go. However, I think I could make do with a drugstore priced powder for setting that spot conceal. I've been getting along surprisingly well with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh powder. This is in the shade Fair One. It's not super fair. I mean, again, kind of like the NARS concealer. It's a little bit dark for me, but it works to set the spot conceal and sort of tone down areas of my skin that I don't want to draw attention to. And it's not so dark that it makes a shadow on my face or something. I also find that it's skin refining enough, even though it's a powder foundation rather than a setting powder, that I can use it in a pinch just to set my T-zone. And it does a pretty good job of blurring wrinkles. So I would be able to make do with it for a while rather than also needing to get a dedicated setting or finishing powder. I recently tested, I actually just t today tested the NARS version of that, the like high-end version. And I'm tempted to say that that's what I would get because I was so favorably impressed by it. And I can't wait to start using it instead of the ColourPop one. But it's so new to me that I feel like I can't in good conscience declare that in this video. If I were filming this video yesterday, I would have just said the ColourPop one without amending it. But I did want to throw that out there. There's a chance that all four of those basic base products for me would end up being high end. But I feel good about that. I feel good about the division of resources there. When it comes to eye makeup, given my current relationship with eye makeup, I think I would be able to be pretty restrained in terms of how much I bought, like how many things I purchased. But I also think some of the products would be high end and some of them would be more affordable. My number one most used, most traveled with, most depended on eyeshadow product is the now discontinued for some absurd reason, Tom Ford Naked Bronze. Of course, if I genuinely lost this, I could buy one of the unopened ones that's like floating around on eBay or Poshmark or something. I could replace it even though it is technically discontinued. But I think what I would do if I lost this is buy the version that Auric offers. Auric Defiance is a dupe for Tom Ford Naked Bronze. And I think that color-wise, it's exactly the same or almost exactly the same. And I know that formula-wise, it's spot on. It's a gorgeous, moussey formula that blends just as easily and sets down just as well. Topper's just as sparkly. I haven't tried Defiance. I've tried the Oryx Smoke Reflect in other colors. And I think that I would feel confident replacing Tom Ford Naked Bronze if I lost it with Oryx Defiance. And in fact, when this gets too old to use, or if I use it up, that's what I'll do. Another possibility is that I could get this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Adaptogen. This ColourPop Super Shock is pretty new to me, and I've been enjoying using it so much. I love the way that my eyes look when I put it all over.
Adaptogen is there on the top and Naked Bronze is there underneath. So you can see that they're not exactly the same. Adaptogen is a little bit more cool toned. It's like a little bit greener than the cream and Naked Bronze. But it would do to tide me over if I lost all my makeup and I just needed the one thing that I truly can't be without. And what that is for me is a neutral to cool, kind of grungy, easy to apply cream bronze eyeshadow. Like a one and done all over rich creamy bronze that doesn't lean copper. That is I think all that I would need until I came to the point where I was ready to invest in a palette. That would be somewhere down the line. I think that I could get by for quite a while with just something like that. Either Defiance from Auric, the ColourPop Super Shock. If I ended up spending more in other areas, which we'll get to in a second, there are a couple of other products for which I could choose like a really budget option or a more high-end option, depending on how I was feeling. What I would do probably is sit back in the moment and decide whether I was going to go for the high-end eyeshadow or the high-end, you know, blush or cheek products or whatever. And if I decided to spend less on eyeshadow, I would go for the ColourPop semi-dupe. Mascara though, I don't think I would need to spend a lot on. I think I would just get the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara. It can be built up to be a really fluffy, thick, long lash. A lighter application gives you a lighter lash. Or I might try a drugstore mascara that I've never tried. A lot of them work pretty well or really well and work well enough for me for my needs right now. But e.l.f. Big Mood is one that I know is reliable for me, really beautiful, easy to use, can bring the drama if I needed to bring the drama, and, you know, it's inexpensive. For brows, I think that I would probably opt for the Refi Brow Pomade. I've been using the Fluff Up Brow Wax from Benefit, and I really, really like it, and so it's sort of a toss-up between the two. I might just replace this if I lost it, but I like change, and I do kind of like to bounce around between different things that I know work for me in the same category. It's been a long time since I had that refi product and I could see myself just choosing it because I know that it's great, but it's been a while, you know? But I would definitely replace the Gen C arch support with itself. This is one of those fiber building and color building brow pomades, I guess. I mean, it's not a gel, but it, it feels like it's a liquid powder kind of that builds fibers onto the hairs of the brows. I usually use a pomade to set my brows in place and I go over it with this to fill them in a bit and darken them and build more structure, like more hairs. So it's just a little spoolie like this. Gen C is also carried at Credo. So I'd be able to get this and the EXA color corrector at the same time. Oh, I forgot something when I was talking about eye makeup. I think that I would probably immediately replace the Victoria Beckham Eye Kajal in bronze if I lost all my makeup. I just love it so much. It's the perfect creamy, smeary eyeliner that is easy to smudge all over the waterline and the lash line, sometimes even put all over my lids as sort of a light eyeshadow. I love applying it. I love the effect of it. The color goes with everything. It's dark enough to darken the waterline, but it's not so contrasty or so strong in one color direction, like too cool or too warm, that it fights with eye looks. It goes perfectly with all manner of bronze. And I also just like it. Like I like holding it and using it, applying it, like the process of it. I like it so much. There's a chance that I I would get it and also get another color of this if I were placing that order, especially because I'd be feeling sorry for myself because I lost all my makeup. And there's also a chance that I might opt for Mink, the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster. The one that I have is an Onyx and it doesn't get that much use because it's such an intense thing, but Mink is like the naked bronze or adaptogen version of this. There's a chance that I might just get that instead of one of the other bronze eyeshadow options and have that type me over. That would be if I, again, if I really was feeling sorry for myself and I really wanted to invest in a little eye kit. But it's this product and this product alone, the eye kajal, that is the reason that I would be placing an order from VB Beauty if I lost all my makeup. Okay, let's now talk about cheeks. So I think cheeks, even though I love them, I mean, I love cheek makeup, blush, highlight, cream highlight, cream blush, so much. It's maybe because I love them so much and I have kind of a vast experience with them that I think that this is an arena in which I would seriously cut cost corners and just 
bide my time. It's partly because I know that I can be happy with a super inexpensive cream blush formula if it's a good one, but it's also because it's funny. I find that when it comes to blush, if I do this thought experiment of losing all my makeup and then replacing stuff, I feel less of a, an instinct to replace things that I already own and more of an instinct to explore new stuff from scratch in the department of cheek makeup. So I think after much thought, and I gave my I gave it much thought, after much thought, I decided that I think what I would probably do in this situation is cut cost corners by going to J Beauty for my cheek makeup. I would probably order a couple or a few of the Can Make cream cheeks. So Can Make makes these beautiful cream blushes. And I used to have one that was in the matte formula. And I now have this little tiny highlighter from Can Make that I just love. I am so into this right now. I've been wearing it every day. The blushes are bigger than this. This is like minuscule kids makeup vibes, but the formula really delivers. I'll link the video in which I did a, an application of this and first impressions. So Can Make also makes their cream blush in a shiny formula, which I assume is kind of like the blush that I had, which is so lovely. Creamy, but also fluffy, you know, just like soft and melty, but not too heavy. It's just such a beautiful formula. I assume that the shiny version of that is kind of like it has this mixed into it and I think that I would just love that. In fact, even though I haven't lost all of my makeup, I'm kind of tempted to order a couple and see what they're like. But I bet that if I did lose all of my makeup tomorrow, I would buy like one of the matte can make blushes, one of the shiny ones, and maybe replace this little cream highlight as well and just have those for a while and just live with those. I think they're about $10 each. I have them on Yes Style. I think they have some of them on Style Vana and there's a lot of choice. I think the widest selection actually on Amazon. So they're pretty accessible and very affordable. Honorable mentions to some of my favorite cream blushes because they crossed my mind, right? The Chantecaille Cheek Gelée in Happy, which I wear all the time. I would feel a pang if I lost it. Phytosurgeon's Condensate, which is a fabulous desaturated cream blush. I would also feel a pang if I lost it. I've been wearing Merit Fox a lot. I just keep reaching for it and keep reaching for it. It would be hard not to to replace that right away if I lost it. But I think all of these, I would just wait, I would wait on them. You know, I would be like, oh, I miss that. But let me go this other route, this much less expensive route and just see how I feel after a while. And they might make it onto the long-term list of things that I would eventually buy. But I don't feel like I would buy them right away. I think I would be happy with the budget cheeks. Lips, however, ooh girl, <laughs> I would go straight to Merit. I, I think I would just buy three, maybe four, for lip products from Merit. I mean, I could see myself doing it tomorrow if I lost all my makeup. For lipsticks, it would be Merit 1990 and Merit Tiger. 1990 is the brown one there, and Tiger is the sort of brick red. I have a swatch video of this entire range of lipsticks that's really detailed and up close, and I'll link that down below in case you're curious. I've also been wearing Baby a lot, and again, depending on how spendy I was feeling or which choices I had made in other arenas, if I had gotten the Victoria Beckham mink eyeshadow or just the eye cajals and, you know, the ColourPop eyeshadow, I might get Baby too. The Merit Shade Slick lip oil thingies, I wear these all the time. In fact, I couldn't find my favorite one, Marrakesh. I think it's in a purse somewhere because I just wear the butt out of that thing. And I would probably get it and also taupe, which is my second favorite. This is taupe. The thing that's great about them, as my sister pointed out recently in that Q&A video, is that they're sheer enough that you can just apply them like a chapstick. You can apply them without a mirror, but they have this juicy color that makes your lips look really great, feel really good. They're nourishing. I mean, I think I would, without compunction, Function, just immediately buy my two favorite Merit lipsticks and my two favorite Merit lip oils. And I think that that would tide me over for quite a while. Because realistically, that's the makeup that I'm wearing. Those are the lip products that I am wearing over and over and over again and sort of like wearing down to a nub. And then thinking about what else I would really miss for lips, I thought of the Ilia Lip Wrap, which I mentioned again recently because I got so many compliments on my lips when I was wearing this in Charleston, even though it's just a clear balm. This one is like done. It's really 
hard to squeeze it out. So I just reordered this. Like in my real life, I, I just replaced it with my own money. I think it's like $23 or something. So I feel pretty confident that if I lost everything, I would replace the Ilia lip wrap as well. But I would also miss the Make Serum Balm for a lip treatment. I really love the Make Serum Balm. I think that that's something that would go on my long-term acquisitions list. Or if I decided to cut corners in a lot of other arenas and go big in one, I could see myself buying the Victoria Beckham products from Violet Gray. Violet Gray also carries some Make Beauty. And it did occur to me as I was thinking through this when I got to the cheeks section. Well, no, it was when I was thinking about the reality of my situation, my fake situation. I've lost all my makeup. I'm replacing things one by one. I'm placing an order from Victoria Beckham. I'm on there. I put an eye kajal in my cart. I'm feeling sorry for myself, so I put mink in my cart. I could kind of see myself deciding to try the stick highlighter, the cream highlighter from Victoria Beckham, and just like risk it like a biscuit and be like, this is going to be my cream highlighter now. I could even see myself giving the Victoria Beckham Cheeky Posh blush another try. I didn't like the one that I had, but it was in a very dark color. I think it was a little bit defective like it was rattling around in its case. Just because, and I'm telling you about this because I feel like with cheek products, again, I have this instinct to try something new instead of going back to the old stuff, even the old stuff that I really, really love. I just feel like the stakes are a little bit lower. Maybe I feel like my tastes are changing and I'm kind of curious to know what else is out there. Or like I could be happy with a bunch of different things and different than what I have now instead of needing my exact same things the way I do with complexion and even with mascara and eye makeup. So that is is one potentiality. You know, if I if I had a pretty comfortable budget in the month that this disaster struck, I could see myself going to either Victoria Beckham or Violet Grey and just going for it with like the eyeliner, the eyeshadow, and the cheek products, and then getting the Make Beauty stuff as well at Violet Grey, and then cutting as many corners as I possibly could everywhere else. It does seem like a lot. I feel like that's the least likely scenario, but it crossed my mind, and so I thought I would share. And it's just interesting. Like, why do I feel different about blush? Why do I feel like I would buy a cream cheek and a highlighter stick that I've never tried? Whereas with all of the other types of product, I would reliably be getting things that I have tried and that I know that I like. So those are the things. Those are the couple of versions of what I think I would do immediately. But then there's this long list, things that I would want to reacquire eventually. It's the more expensive stuff. If this were to truly happen, I could see myself waiting on the more expensive expensive makeup, especially the more expensive color cosmetics, because I wouldn't want to spend so much money all at once. But all of these things would stay on my list. I would put them on like my holiday and birthday wish lists. You know what I mean? And eventually, I think definitely repurchase or reacquire a Royal Scandal, the Gucci lipstick, the best, the goat, the expensive goat, a Pat McGrath palette, eventually, eventually, eventually. Maybe not one of the two that I have now. Maybe I wouldn't be replacing one of my lost to. I'm not totally sure. Maybe Moonlit Seduction. Maybe. But I think eventually I would want a new Pat McGrath palette if I lost all of my eye makeup. Either Auric Glow Lust or Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin. Not in this shade, but in the new shade that's a bit lighter than this. This is Crystal Nebula. I think it's like Pink Moon or something that's lighter. I love having a high-end liquid highlight that's really kind to the skin that sets down completely. However, I haven't been wearing these a lot lately, so I don't know if I would feel super compelled to buy one of them right away. Maybe if I were placing the order from Auric to get Defiance as a replacement for Tom Ford, I might go ahead and just put Glow Lust in the cart because it's such a great product and I would know that I would like to have it. But my guess is that it would be on the long list. Lisa Eldridge Velvet Dragon, my absolute favorite red lipstick of all time. I can't imagine going the rest of my life without it, but also I don't wear it enough to feel like I would need to replace it immediately if it were lost. The Make Beauty Mascara I've really fallen for, and that's the one that I would eventually want. If I were buying so much makeup all at once, I would be able to hack it with a drugstore mascara, but the day would eventually come when I would want to treat myself to a slightly more expensive one, and I would get the one from Make. But again, if I ended up going the violet gray route and just chunking it and getting a bunch of Victoria Beckham and a bunch of Make Beauty stuff from violet gray, I might go ahead and order the mascara on the first round, who's to say? But again, my guess is that it and the Make Beauty Serum Balm lip treatment would be on the long list.
Maybelline Gone Grage is not expensive. <laughs> it's a Maybelline lipstick. It used to be in stores. And if I did see it like in an Ulta or a CVS, of course I would buy it. But I think I would likely have to order it from the Maybelline website, which is where it is now. And I just, I wouldn't do it right away with all of this other stuff to get and all these other packages coming in the mail. I wouldn't be placing like a separate order from Maybelline just for one lipstick. I would bide my time with Gone Grage. I would be able to do without it for a while. I would be able to wait on it, but it would definitely be on the long list not for financial reasons, but for logistical reasons. It would be on the long list and I would get it back into my hot little hands eventually. And then the last thing on the long list is the Chanticleer Elephant. I need it. I can't do without it. It's so perfect. I choose this. I reach for this almost as much as I do Naked Bronze. It's the slightly more cool toned version of a monochromatic bronze eye. It's like a bronzy pewter. And I just, I would begin to miss it acutely after a while. I don't think I would be able to stomach the price at the same time as I was replacing all of my true necessities, but it might actually be at the top, at the top of the long list, the short long list. So in case you're curious, here's how I imagine it going down schedule wise. I imagined first I would go to Ulta or place an order from Ulta and I would get the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, the ColourPop Pressed Powder Foundation, and probably the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara. If I could find Maybelline Gone Grage there in a magical world in which it's in Ulta, I would get it too, but I don't think that it would be. I'd place an order from Credo to get the Exa Green Color Corrector and the Gen C Arch Support, and maybe the Ilia Lip Wrap Lip Balm would go into that order as well if it was in stock. The Sephora order would probably be the biggest one. That's going to be the Rose Ink Concealer, the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer, the Refi Brow Pomade, and probably all of the Merit products too. The Auric order would be kind of a maybe, right? If I decided to just go TPPP for eyeshadow and get ColourPop Adaptogen, I would get that in the Ulta order or when I was at Ulta. Then I would probably end up skipping the Auric or at least putting it off, like putting it on the long list. But if I decided I really wanted to have that dupe for Tom Ford Naked Bronze, I would place that order from Auric, might end up adding Glow Lust into that order, might also end up adding the Ceramide Lip Treatment lip Plush Ritual instead of the Ilia. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like I could see it going that way rather than replacing the Ilia Balm, but only if I ended up ordering from Auric at all. And then the same thing with the Victoria Beckham. It could just be as simple as me ordering one eye cajal, but it could be as indulgent as me ordering an eye cajal, mink, the eyeshadow, and then just deciding to go for it and try out a blush and a highlight as well. I would have to make that decision in balance with how everything else unfolded. But my guess is that I would restrain myself and go with the Can Make, the J Beauty products from probably Amazon. I think they have the widest selection there. And the last time I checked, they didn't have this little kids makeup crystal thing in stock on Yes Style, and I was only able to find it on Amazon. So that might be what I ended up doing, surprising us all. So there's no way to know exactly exactly how the chips would fall, but I have a pretty good sense of what the shape of things would be. I would definitely put most of my eggs in the complexion basket in terms of spending, in terms of high-end and investment makeup. Those are my really important products. And it appears that the second most precious things to me are my lip products, those Merit lip products. I just wouldn't want to mess around with half measures with lips, but I'm very happy with all different kinds of sparkly, shiny, and colorful things for the cheeks. For eyes, I clearly have very high end and very affordable ways of creating the same monochromatic eye look that I love to do. And I don't know, I feel like there's a pretty good chance that I might actually just opt for the ColourPop Super Shock and then bide my time and wait and see what else I felt like I truly needed. This ended up being much more interesting thought experience than I thought that it would be. Again, not just a list of my favorite products, but an exercise in like weighing the pros and cons of various different types of makeup, price points of makeup. The idea of having to buy it all at once really highlights for me which of my products are absolute necessities in their exact pure form and that I would repurchase again no matter what, and which of my products can kind of be switched out for other 
things, maybe less expensive things in a pinch, which ones are on the short list and which ones are on the long list, you know? I'm aware that it's been kind of a roundabout storytelling and I'll link everything down below and I'll try to clarify more in the description box. So check there if you want those links and also if you're like, wait, what? Hopefully it will be clearer there. I'm so curious to know what you would repurchase. Maybe just your top one thing, like what is the one thing that you know with absolute certainty that you wouldn't wait on and that you wouldn't cut corners on. So thank you so much for watching. And if you feel like sharing, please put that in the comment section down below. But whatever you do, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.